You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, in North Carolina, federal judges have, uh, of course, changed the shape of the districts there, uh, giving Democrats a shot to potentially sna snatch some of the Republican seats in Congress uh, from the GOP. Of course, Republican uh, Congressman George Holding, uh, he is the incumbent. Uh, he is being targeted uh, by several Democrats in, 19, uh, 20, in the last election, 2018. He lost by six points to Linda Coleman. Democrats think they could have a pickup there. Uh, one of the folks who was running against him, uh, of course, is my next guest. Uh, uh, she is, um, first of all, her name is uh, Monica. Uh, she joins us. Uh, she First of all, she is a um, school board member, executive director uh, of a North Carolina Coalition Against a Sexual Assault, and has spent 20 years advocating for thousands of women and children. And again, uh, she joins us right now. Monica, how you doing? I'm well. Thank you for having me. All right, let's talk about this race here. Democrats think that they can pick up seats held by Republicans. And so why do you think you can beat Holding? Um, so as you mentioned, Linda Coleman came as close as a Democrat has. And I do believe that's because in our district, like many districts in North Carolina, black women voters are super voters. And I think she broke down many barriers in 2018. And so when I was recruited, that was one of the major factors for me is believing that she set the tone for me to move forward to really continue to make sure our super voters and our low propensity voters actually had a reason to show up to the polls. And so, uh, obviously, of course, all that hard work going through the court system uh, now reshapes these districts. And so, uh, how, first of all, how is it looking right now uh, leading up to the primary, of course, as opposed to the general? Um, so, so right now we actually haven't had any polls run, um, so we don't actually know statistically where we are. But what I will say is uh, the fact that this is an open seat and a seat that we have great likelihood of getting after the primary, because it, as you mentioned, the gerrymander, gerrymandering has happened, so this di district is pretty blue. We feel very excited and really feel like the possibility is mine and the real pathway forward is making sure we have pe give people a reason to get out to vote. And very similarly to what you're talking about, I would say one of the only disconcerting things we've heard is many people in North Carolina aren't showing up as much as they usually do for early voting because people are waiting to see what happens in South Carolina at the top of the ballot. Uh, and obviously, uh, of course, we, we were heading into, uh, you know, Super Tuesday is only four days after uh, South Carolina primary. Uh, and so, again, there's still a very much a, a unsettled race here. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And so I think what you're going to see is more people are going to are not going to early vote and will be voting on Super Tuesday. Um, again, very similar to South Carolina, although we like to say we're different in North Carolina. We are still holding true to uh, many of the older African-Americans really were very strong Biden fans. And I think they really want to see what happens to him in South Carolina. So for me, that means our numbers are not upticking as we'd like them to for Democrat and unaffiliated voters showing up for early voting. I think we're going to see a surge on Super Tuesday. What are the issues that you are focused on uh, to appeal to Democrats um, to turn them out uh, in this uh, primary? So one of the things about Wake County is we're the fastest growing community um, county. Uh, we're the 15th largest school district in the country. And we're noted in many magazines as the best place to work, live and play. And one of the things is ensuring that every single person in this district has the same ability to be successful and thrive. And so we're talking about what does economics look like outside of the tech field, pharmaceutical field, but how do we really build new green jobs here? And I think that's what people are wanting us to talk about. The second piece, of course, is healthcare. Without a shadow of a doubt, we're in the South. We've seen a lot of our hospitals close um, or buyouts. And so people really care about the accessibility to healthcare in addition to healthcare coverage. All right, uh, Monica Johnson, Holster, we surely appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right, folks, back to that Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right.
right, so a lot of y'all always asking me about terms, some of the pocket squares that I wear. Now, I don't know. Robert don't have one on. Nope. Now, I don't particularly like the white pocket squares. I don't like even the silk ones. And so I was reading GQ magazine a number of years ago, and I saw uh, this guy who had this, this pocket square here, and it looks like a flower. Uh, this is called a shibori pocket square. This is how the Japanese manipulate the fabric to create this sort of flower effect. So I'm going to take it out and then place it in my hand so you see what it looks like. And I said, man, this is pretty cool. And so I tracked down, the. it took me a year to find a company that did it. Uh, and so uh, they make these about 47 different colors. And so I love them because, again, as men, we don't have many accessories to wear. So we don't have many, many options. Uh, and so this is really a pretty cool uh, pocket square. Now, what I love about this here is you saw uh, when it's uh, in, in the pocket, you know, it gives you that flower effect like that but if I wanted to also unlike other because if I flip it and turn it over it actually gives me a different type of texture and so therefore it gives me a different look so there you go so uh, if you actually want to uh, get one of these shibori pocket squares we have them in 47 different colors all you got to do is go to rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares all right so first of all that graphic is way too small so uh, tomorrow we're gonna run it right down here all across the screen so it's rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares all you got to do is go to my website uh, and you can actually uh, get this now for those of you who are members of our bring the funk fan club there's a discount for you to get our pocket squares. That's why you also got to be a part of our Bring the Funk fan club. Uh, and so that's what we want you to do. And so it's pretty cool. So if you want to jazz your look up, you can do that. In addition, uh, y'all seen me with some of the feather pocket squares. My sister who is a designer. She actually makes these. They're all custom made. So when you also go to the website, you can also order one of the customized uh, feather pocket squares uh, right there at rollingsmartin.com forward slash pocket squares. So please do so. And of course, uh, that goes to support the show. And again, if you're a Brenda Funk fan club member, you get a discount. This is why you should join the fan club. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.